Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. My name is Bea Bince, the Club Dose Director for District 95. Let me welcome you on our first Club Dose webinar. The topic is how to build a successful new club. First of all, I will introduce to you our Club Dose team. Then, Elizabeth Nostep will take over and talk to you about the lead management and how we can do, it, do that more effectively. Justin Lofsted will share with us her tips about how to plan and run a successful demo meeting. Then I will take over and talk a bit about recruiting members and build the membership to achieve the necessary number of members for the chartering. And last but not least, Elizabeth will take back the word and introduce to you the forms and the key steps to charter the club successfully. At the end of our call, you will have a chance to ask questions and share your best practices. I am happy to announce that we have already a club growth team, the club growth hub. As a club growth director, I am leading it. And as the members, we can welcome Elizabeth Mostep, our past region 11 advisor and past district 59 district governor. Honor Reynolds, club building leader for division K, Churstin Lofstad, club building leader for Division G, Tobias Schlössler, club building leader for Division I, Jakub Kratofwil, club building leader for Area LC, Pedram Mogadam, club building leader for Division A and also club coaching expert, and Esther Parnadi, Division D director, are members of our team. If you have someone who is acting as a club building leader in your division and is not on this list yet, please let us know and we will be happy to add him or her and involve in our team. As you know, Toastmaster is a worldwide organization with more than 313,000 members all over the world. There are already more than 14,650 clubs. In our district, in Northern Eastern Europe, we have 232 chartered clubs currently. But we know that there are many more people who could benefit from the Toastmaster programs, leadership and communication programs, if there would be more clubs in their proximity. That's why we feel important to support you to run successful clubs. And with this, I would like to hand it over to Elizabeth Mostert, who will talk about the process to create a successful club and the lead management. The lead generation, the lead process, what we do with a lead when it comes in. So when we get a lead, and I'll come to where leads come from on the next slide when we get there, we have to qualify them and then we have to find out if they're still interested. So if they're still interested, then they become a prospect. And do they meet the qualification that we have? Because we do have some qualifications of, of what we should do before we start a club. If they're still interested after that, then we might point them to an existing club or it might be that they're going to start a new club. And I wanted to put down at the bottom, if we um, get a person that's interested in starting a club, then there is the manual at the Toastmaster site, which is how to start a new club. And I've even put the link at the bottom. Anybody who's interested in starting a new club should go download that manual. It's got a lot of great information in. And we're just going to highlight some of the points out of that manual in this presentation. So the next slide. So this one is where do our leads come from? 
So it can be the people who go to the Toastmasters webpage and they fill in the form that says they want to start a new club. That information is then sent to the top district officers. This does not mean that they really are going to do that. And that's why I had on the other page, we have to qualify it. But where we get some other leads is Toastmaster members who move to a new location. For instance, we had some members that moved out of my city, Gothenburg, to Kungsbacka or another place or internationally, or people who moved from the US or Canada to my city, Gothenburg. And they say, oh, well, where is a Toastmaster club? The other thing, other place that might happen is people go out and do a Google search. So they might do a search on speaking clubs and there I put a Swedish word in. They might put in overcome fear of speaking, something like that. And then they might fill in the form, want to start a new club. So those are some possible generations of leads. Oh, actually, I thought of one more thing that's not on here. And that is, if you talk to the members of your club and you find out why they aren't attending a meeting, they might tell you, oh, well, Tuesday is no longer a good day for me. So if you hear that, that should be a click in your head to say, oh, well, maybe we need a club on Wednesday or Thursday or Saturday another day. So think of those things when you talk to your members, when they tell you they can't attend the club meeting that there currently exists. So how do we qualify the lead? Mention that the lead might be sent from Toastmasters International. The district officers should send on the lead to a division or an area governor or the club director in a division or something. And then the area governor will send it on to the club building person. We talked about Sherston being a club building person. The club builder should call the person. Usually there is a telephone number there. And in case it's not long distance and you can connect up in some way, a telephone call is so much better than just sending them along an email. The emails tend to get lost in somebody else's email box. So my really suggest that you call the person and then you qualify them. And I've put together some sorts of questions. What you wanna do is ask questions to find out what their interest is and why did they really put in, they wanna start a new club. And then the last point I have at the right side is put their information in a new club contest list, contacts list. In our case, it's Division G, but for each of the divisions, there should be a contact list of people. And this came really into highlight in what we were doing in Division G, because at first we only had one person um, interested in a new club in, in one city. And it's quite often very hard for one person alone to start a new club if they don't have Toastmasters experience. But then all of a sudden, two or three other people came along and said they wanted to start a club. And at least one of them had some Toastmasters experience. So if you have this contact list, that gives you the capability of tracking the people and to let them know that there are other people in the city who are interested. Put them together, get them going to start the club. Next slide. So here's some questions to ask this lead that comes along. Have you been a Toastmaster before? Do you know anything about Toastmasters? What made you interested in Toastmasters? And they give their examples there. Where are you living and where do you want to start the club? Is it in the same city as a club already exists or is it someplace completely new? and see how much they know about their own city, how many people live there. And then the tough question is, are you prepared to lead the project to build the Toastmaster Club? Because it actually becomes a project. You need to get lots of people together to help you build the club. So you listen in to what they answer to any and all of those questions. If they give the answer that they know nothing about Toastmasters and have never been a Toastmaster before, 
then you know that they're going to need more help. Um, but that doesn't mean that they can't do it because if a person is enthusiastic, they can read the material and find out how to do it. If they are in a city or town where a club currently exists, then you want to check with them whether they have attended a club in their own city. Or are they perhaps somebody who says, I can't attend on Tuesday nights when the other existing club meets already. So they want to start it on a new day or a new part of the city or town. Next slide. So those kind of questions, and please write down the answers to what they give you, those are sort of a qualification. So here I say, if he lives in a city or town where there's an existing club, invite them to visit the existing club. Perhaps they want to start a club um, at the company where they work, and there, that might be in the same city where there are already existing clubs, and that means that you can call upon other Toastmasters in that city or town to help that person start the club. If, if there's not an existing club or he's not starting at a company, then there's some additional questions to check with him. And these kind of questions have come out from the district. Is it reasonable to start a club in that city? That is, how far away is it from another city where there is a club. What's the closest uh, Toastmaster club to them? Because we have found out, yeah, uh, so there was a question there, where did we find the link? If you go to the toastmasters.org homepage, there is a um, icon there, start a club. So that's where a lead comes from. I'll, I'll answer some of the other questions as we come along, but thank you for asking them. So I think we can fill in with a little bit of the information in the question section. So here's some questions to think about, especially at the area level. How far away is that place where they say they want to start a club from a current Toastmaster club? If it's 50, 100 kilometers, then probably somebody is willing to go and support them, and there's probably money available from the district or the area budget. Um, do you or that person who's wanting to start the club there know anyone else living there? And it can be just anybody generally, but if it's a completely new person coming into the town, then if they don't know anybody at all, then, well, it's a little bit more of a, you know, a tougher situation because where are they going to find the potential people who want to come along and join the club? But if they know somebody, if they work at a company, if they belong to other social organizations, then there's definitely people. Third question, how easy or cheap is it to get to the new location? Can you drive or do you have to fly to get there? As an example, we had a person who lived in a town much further north in Sweden, some 800 kilometers from where I live or some of the other supporting club lead people. And so it was deemed that it was too expensive to go to that place to support them. Oh, all right, who jumped to that page? Okay, and the, the next question that ties into this is, who do we have in the area that is willing to support a new club getting going? Do we have some people who are coming along in their leadership roles such that they need to be a sponsor or mentor starting a new club uh, and they're willing to do it and they have the time? So that we can very easily look at in Easy Speak to see who is further along in the leadership roles and we probably know the people around in our own clubs who are interested in reaching their next leadership levels. Um, just, just so I make that clear about the sponsors and mentors, um, they're, they're two different roles that um, the district assigns to a, a new potential club coming along. And they're people who especially read that how to start a Toastmaster club manual and 
then read what their role should be as a sponsor or a mentor. Then they will get credit to their advanced leadership awards when they successfully charter the new club. So you've qualified the person, um, they're still totally interested, they're ready to start it, they have more people they want to get in. So on, on the left hand side is the contact person. Here's what I always ask the contact person to do. They should start looking around for a place to hold the meeting. Can it be at their workplace? Do they have a social center of some sort? Um, any sort of place that they can think of that they can hold a meeting. Decide on a date, place and time. And usually from the start where this first phone call, second phone call happens, you need to go out one to two months in time. At least in Sweden, we need that amount of time because you have to book the meeting place and you have to start getting some marketing material available and you have to start getting together the list of people who are interested to come. What we've been able to do in Sweden is we have a very helpful person who will um, build a special page, uh, usually in easy speak, where they can, we can put in the information about the new club starting, the date, the time, um, and the contact person. We also have that contact person build a Facebook group because that seems to be a very effective way for marketing the new club. The, the contact person um, then liaises with the new club building person in your area or division. And the new club building person starts to look for and find other people to help at the demonstration meeting. Who are these people who are willing to be, <coughs> who are the people who are willing to help out as sponsors or mentors? And the new club builder will also start to prepare a demo meeting agenda. We also have um, some examples of that, which I didn't send along to Bia, but perhaps we can include it in the presentation. A demo meeting should be basically like a short Toastmaster meeting where you're giving a couple of speeches, a couple of evaluations and a table topic session, as well as some information about what Toastmasters is. <coughs> Excuse me again. I always inform all the other clubs in the division about a new club is potentially coming along in X place. Um, so I always ask all the other people in the division to help with the promotion because usually other people in the division will know other people in that particular city or wherever they are. Somebody always knows somebody in another place. And this is my last slide as suggestions for the people who are club builders. Uh, you have to keep in touch with a regular place uh, basis with this person who's the club contact. So those people who aren't willing right away to start the project to do a club, just keep in touch with them either with an email or phone call every once in a while to see if their situation has changed because um, maybe they couldn't do it right at the time when they first expressed the interest, but later on they can do it. Keep sending them emails, phone calls, and invite them even to come to other area events or other club meetings. And be sure that that contact person has the PDF from TMI, how to start a club. And now I'll turn it over to Sherston Lufstead, who will talk about the demo meeting, which is what you've done to prepare when you've got lots of people who are ready to come to the demo meeting. Sherston? Yes, thank you, Elizabeth. And I will actually not share any slides, so I will just speak, but I can put together some notes for those of you who wish to be reminded. What I will do is uh, I will draw a lot of my information from personal experience, but also from a document that is referenced in the How to Start a New Club page. Um, it's actually called How to Build a Toastmasters Club, and it's a step-by-step -step guide, and it's item 121, and it's available in a um, digital format. It's a very useful document, I find. It also includes um, examples of an agenda for a demonstration meeting. But let me start from the beginning. 
I'd like to share some few general thoughts about the demonstration meeting and uh, I believe we will hook into each other all throughout this session as I, you've already heard a reference to the demonstration meeting by Elizabeth. And then I will cover some three, highlight the three important parts that we need to consider. Okay, there's a slide there. Okay. We'll, we'll see what, how we'll use those items there as well. <laughs> but I, I can recognize the uh, first one, there are lots of promotion. Let me start by saying that the demonstration meeting is the occasion when we show the value and benefits of Toastmasters education program to prospective new members. Very important to remember. The meeting shows should show how a typical Toastmasters meeting is conducted. And the demo meeting should inspire the audience to get involved, want to learn more, sign up and come to the next meeting. And the three parts that I want to highlight are what you should do before the demonstration meeting. And we've already touched upon that. And the first item on this slide that you see, the promotion bit, is, is obviously part of the preparation. And you need or should have a team, a planning team, to help with that. Second part that I, I'll share with you in a few thoughts is the execution about, of the demonstration meeting by a meeting team. It may be the same people as the planning team. It may not be. You meet, may need to add a few more people in. And the third part is what comes next, what you should be doing after the demonstration meeting. But let's start with the prior to the demonstration meeting, a few thoughts that I wish to share with you. You, you need to consider, obviously, as we've heard before in, in Elizabeth's presentation, the, the location, the venue, the type of club and, and, and the support that you can get from uh, surrounding clubs and surrounding uh, members. The, the ease of access, if you plan to, to build a new club as a community club, ease of access in the city or the community, depending of course on the prospective participants. Invitation should be sent, the initiator, this, the lead or the person who has taken the initiative to start this new club, it's obviously the person who should send invitations or be, have a little team to send invitations out. Posters that you need, want, may want to, to, to create. Uh, you want to collect Toastmaster material, such as the magazine, to hand out at the demonstration meeting. You might want to get some TM flyers and create a local poster with name and, and contact information of the local person to be, to be contacted. Then you need to decide on the agenda and the meeting team. Print agendas and other material to be handed out to the demonstration meeting. These, this is a sort of project in its own right to, to plan the actual demonstration meeting. And there's a lot of information in the manual the, as I, that I referred to earlier, how to build a Toastmasters club. <clears throat> the planning team obviously benefit from having experienced Toastmaster, but also, as Elizabeth said, you need uh, someone who's enthusiastic and you can read a lot of this from Toastmasters um, documents that you can get. Um, and you can get help from the, the club lead um, sorry, club building officer and, and um, fellow Toastmasters. So um, there's a lot of help to be done. But the planning part is very important. The actual demonstration meeting, the execution by a meeting team, a few thoughts on that. You need to, as usual, prepare the meeting room. The agenda should be there, had to be handed out. Tea material, I propose that you, you have the Toastmaster magazine. You can probably get hold of Toastmaster magazine from members who may have du duplicate copies and things like that. Membership forms to be signed. You want to grab the people 
at, at the actual demonstration meeting if you can. The, as I said before, the demonstration meeting shows how a typical Toastmasters meeting is conducted. I propose, and this is what is recommended as well in the manual, that we aim for a short or at least not longer than an hour's meeting. And the proposal I have, the examples I've seen in recent years that have been very successful, you have three prepared speeches, table topic session, individual evaluations of the speeches, and a timer, and it's all led by a Toastmaster. The a welcome address should be given by whoever has initiated the meeting and, and most often the person who sent out the invitation. The, a short introduction to Toastmasters is, is useful. And when I say short introduction, it's not a, it's sort of seven minute speech. It's recommended to give by, it to be given by an uh, experienced Toastmaster, of course who should be part of the meeting team. The three speeches that I mentioned should include, preferably, a relatively inexperienced speaker to give an icebreaker. We don't want to scare anyone off. We want to show that this is for everybody. And we, we would like to have someone who's not used to standing in front of a group like this and speak, someone the audience may know it could be the initiator, the one who sent the invitation out, the one who may know quite a few of the people in the audience. And I've, I've been to a few demonstration meetings where this has taken place. The initiator, the, in, whoever sent the invitation out, has given a nice breaker. And then we want experienced Toastmasters to give the other speeches. One perhaps from the competent communicator, manual, the first manual, and also possibly a speech from an advanced manual. And the experienced Toastmasters perform the roles of evaluators and a timer and prepare a table topic session as well. The table topic session, you could be clever and make sure you allow for the audience to take part. Don't complicate it. I've seen examples where the, the questions have, have been given uh, to the audience uh, which have been directed partly to the experienced Toastmasters in the audience to share their experience of Toastmasters. That's a way to, to extend the content of the meeting and the introduction to Toastmasters. Uh, I know I go through this rather quickly but as I said, I can share these um, thoughts um, in, in a summary afterwards. The, the remember at the end of the session to announce the date, time and place of the next meeting and possibly recruit already at this stage participant to take, uh, participants to take roles, give speeches possibly and things like that. You, you wrap up the meeting and end with a Q&A session when information about charter and membership fees can be given and also other costs connected to running a club. After all, it's like running a small business. We, the meetings I've been to, we've allowed for mingling after the meeting at the venue there's always people who are afraid of or not or hesitant to ask questions in a, in a larger group. Give them the opportunity to come up afterwards, ask questions individually, show, explain the tier manuals that you will have brought as examples, help to fill out membership forms and things like that. So there should be time for mingling afterwards, but the actual meeting, the formal meeting, I recommend to be um, an hour. The, my third part of this is what you do after the demonstration meeting. You must follow up. You must contact the participants. You must send an invitation to the next meeting. And the next meeting 
should not be too far ahead. And you should have prepared for, for the location and all those things as well prior to the demonstration meeting. So let's take a look at the slides that you have in front of you to see if I've covered all the things Bea has thought about. Promotion for the demonstration meeting. Uh, can you do that? Uh, pre previous one. Demo meeting. For promotion for the demo meeting, yes, I, I think we covered that. You must make sure you send invita invitations out and, and promote the, the meeting as best you can with friends, colleagues, whatever. Conduct a demo meeting, keep track of all the people who attended the meeting. That's my third part in a, in a way. Follow, make sure you can follow up all the people who take part. And hold the next meeting, invite everyone to the next meeting and also inform people that that's uh, how it, it um, how meetings happen. You know, we the fact that we have meetings mostly every other week or some clubs may even meet once every week, but uh, that this is a regular event. It's not just a one-off thing. And I think I should have uh, included that in, in my previous uh, information actually. Because those that do not know anything about Toastmasters and most people attending these demonstration meetings will not know anything. They will need to know also basic things that we take for granted and we tend to forget, such as the fact that we do this all the time, every other week, not just once uh, a year. And then final bullet, of course, um, the uh, keep holding meetings and the group. Well, I would say until the group, you have about, you have 20 members and then you can get the, um, you can charter the club. But obviously you need to do uh, what I believe Elizabeth is going to present later on, the, the how to charter a club, how to organize a club, how to um, send in all the different forms and what you need to pay for the, at these different stages. So these uh, notes here um, complement, uh, in a way, the, the points that I made. And that was it, folks. Again, just a reminder, this TM document that I referred to, How to Build a Toastmasters Club, a step-by-step -step guide, item 121 on toastmasters.org, is a very useful document. It has also a, a recommendation for an agenda, which uh, you can recognize what I've said, but it, it has a few other things as well. Basically, what you need to consider, of course, is the local situation and the, the goals that you have um, in, in view of, of the participants and the location that you have. Thank you very much, Justin. There were two questions during this session. One was about how to do the this event, the demo meeting, if there was, uh, if the people who are participating have never heard about Toastmasters, would you like to answer that? I'm uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite follow. Had the people who Elizabeth, who have never I, can, I can answer that. So uh, the question oh, sorry, was yeah. um, from Ugdam in Ulu in northern Finland. If he doesn't have anybody else in Ulu who knows anything about Toastmasters, how can he run a demo meeting? And my suggestion here would actually be if you have some, um, perhaps a company that would have um, a website available, a, a web service available, such that you could have a virtual meeting. I think in that way you could hold a demo meeting with lots of people attending in the room and a few people attending uh, virtually. Yeah, and I can add to that, as you know, we were arranged a, a, a demo meeting up in northern parts of Sweden, and there were a few of us who actually went to that location as well. But people went on their own um, own initiative. Yes. They're actually. But you, again, as you said before, you need to ask around, and it so happened that I had a son studying up there. So you never know. <laughs> you, you might find people in, in different ways. Yeah. The second so, question yeah. that came along was why did we feel that it should be an hour meeting? And 
it's not not a hard and fast rule by anything but i think if you keep it short and snappy and show people how we keep the time and that sort of thing i think you will attract more people than if you have a long dragged out meeting um also allow lots of time for those people who might be too shy to raise their hands in the whole group who want to talk individually to the people who are helping do the demo meeting hmm. Yeah. Yep. Super. Thank you. Let me also share with you that on uh, on a training where we were talking about the demo meetings in uh, in Las Vegas, they actually proposed us to have 20 minutes meetings because that's how they do it in the U.S. There, people know Toastmasters, so I don't think it is very useful for Europe. But I think that one and a half, two hour meetings might be a bit long, and. Anyway, I guess that even on your standard meetings, when you have guests, you introduce how a meeting is going. So this you would do, of course, on the demo meeting as well. And another thing that I like very much on the demo meetings to get uh, to involve as many people as possible. Sometimes we even give out the timer role for uh, people who are present, or if there is a, if there is any voting or something. And with this one, I found that people who are involved and actually doing, participating actively, are much more uh, interested to return back. So let me then continue with the next steps. So once you have the demo meeting, and uh, as Justin mentioned, you should definitely continue it. I currently have a prospective cl uh, club that had a demo meeting and they said that they will organize their next meeting when they will have the 20 people together and they can start a club. And this is clearly a bad strategy because by the time you are waiting, people do not grow, do not develop and they become less interested. So keep making the meetings regularly, I would say at least every other week so that people, new people could come and would hear about it. The other thing so after the demo meeting, as Chersin mentioned as well, it's very good if you already have the membership form and people who, are, who express their interest can sign up right away. And once you have a few people who already signed up and paid in, you should proceed and get the uh, application to organize filled out. This is a form that is included in the pack, but with this one single form and paying 125 US dollars, you can make your club a so-called prospective club that is already on the list of the of Toastmaster International, and I will also send you starter kits, and it's going to be much easier to sign up people later on if you can give them the starter kit and they can start speaking instead of having to wait. Uh, so, yeah, can I interrupt there? So, sure. yeah, one of the things that I found out, we're, we're talking about this starter kit, and that that is getting your new member kit, but I do not give out a new member kit until they've actually paid the membership fee into, into the person or the, you know, how you were um, holding the money, whether you've got a cash box or or whatever for figuring out the membership fees. They do not get the new member kit until they paid in money. Absolutely, that's a very good point. Uh, and this is uh, what I recommend as well. So basically you have the 20 new member kits and then when people fill out the membership kit, uh, membership for application and pay in, you can give it out. I just found out that people are more willing to pay if they already get this, then if they have to wait for a few weeks or months until they get from the US. So that's what uh, what is speeding up, but absolutely don't give out those booklets, until the manuals, until you don't get the money, because then it's going to be very difficult to keep track of that. Okay, so this seems to be very easy and quick. We have the demo meeting, but we saw that most of the prospective clubs uh, take multiple months, some of them more than a year to charter. What can we do to speed it up? I think the first, first thing is uh, to focus on the demo meetings. 
I have already heard about demo meetings where they were, they had actually like 40, 50, 60 participants and already after the demo meeting there were 20 people signing up and paying in. And if you can do that, this is making life very easy because right after the demo meeting you will have it completed and as long as you have the leadership as well, you can move up, fill out the forms and charter the club. Generally this is not what happens. They end up with 12, 10, 15 people maybe and as they keep making the meetings, new people join in. This is the recruitment part that is similar to the recruitment that uh, we do otherwise in the clubs. What helps? There are just a few tips and we will have separate webinars that is going to focus membership building, but uh, I know that some clubs take quite long and I thought this is a useful information. What's very important to fight some opinion leaders. So for example, if we are talking about a company and there are a few managers who have very good experiences, they can really influence people. But this can be also in a community. So try to find the people who have a, a network and who are committed because this is the word of mouth is one of the most effective way to reach people. The other is the social media presence. Building a Facebook page, uh, creating a Facebook group is quite easy and it is free. Also, we have very good experience with setting up Meetup uh, for the clubs and announcing in the Meetup the club meetings. Quite a few people show up on, on those as well. So find out which are the tools that you are comfortable with and which is reaching your audience that you want to reach. But with adding some pictures of the events and putting out some information, this is a very useful tool. The other thing is communicate regularly. If you do that, not only once or twice, but you communicate before the sessions and communicate after that, sharing some pictures, then you will reach much more people. I know about clubs where they were stuck and they organize speech craft. Speech craft is a kind of workshop where you go through certain sessions, six, eight, ten sessions, to have the people to develop and become better in making speeches. So speech craft could be a good opportunity as well to attract people who want to develop their communications skills and quite a few people who participate on the speech craft and see the benefit decide later on to stay, the, stay in the club. Special events could also be useful. So for example, there are Toastmaster Leadership Institute TLI events or there are the contests, the conferences where you can invite people who are non-Postmaster members yet and if they see the quality and they are attracted to the people or they make friends, it, is, it can also help your recruitment. For example, when in Hungary what we do that when our, there are people who are members of the prospective clubs or who are guests in the prospective clubs, we invite them to the Toastmaster Leadership Institute and also the people who officers who will work or who are willing to work on the new clubs, the prospective clubs, they can participate on the officer training even though they are not officially officers yet. You can always organize a contest. Membership building, bring your friend, bring two of your friends or you give a nice book to some to the person who who can bring most new members. Those are very simple things and, and quite a few people are competitive. So you can really make it fun and productive as well. And one thing that Elizabeth, uh, no, Justin has already mentioned earlier, so I'm just referring back. Very often when there is a meeting, a demo meeting or some session, it is useful to give something to the people. It could be a guest packet. It can be just a short introduction about what Toastmaster is or how to reach you. It can be uh, some flyer. 
there are quite a few flyers that Toastmaster International have. On the following page, I was just uh, listing a few. Those are all downloadable from the Toastmaster International website for free. I especially like the features benefits and value session. For example, when we are go talking to corporate people and we are showing the uh, chart that is listing the what are the different features of the Toastmaster activities, what are the benefits and what value it can bring. It is very easy to sell Toastmaster with that to the people. So this can be also in the user pack, but you can also add like all Toastmaster magazines. I see that many people do read the magazines, but then they don't know what to do with them and they just throw it away. But if you think about it, those are very interesting articles, very useful tapes and if you collect them and you can hand this out to the people on the demo meetings or after the sessions, then people read about it and they might consider coming back. So giving something to their hand can also be useful. So if you are doing these activities, it can help building the club, it can help recruiting new members to achieve the 20 people level. The next step is going to be to recruit the officers. So once you have more and more people in your club, it is also important to start talking about leadership, not only about communication, and find the people who are the drivers of the activity. Those people who are willing to take the roles and who are willing to organize the life of the club. What I would actually say to do that, to have at least three, four people, even before the demo meeting, who say that they are willing to serve as officers. We had bad experience when there was one people really committed. He pulled together a club, recruited members, then he accepted a job in another city and the whole initiative stopped and we could not move forward and charter the club. So make sure that it is not dependent on one person but you have a few, pe few more people. And once you have the people's identified supported by the sponsor and you have the 20 members, then you can move forward to the chattering process. And with this, I hand it over to Elizabeth. Elizabeth who will continue on talking about to, how to charter successfully a club. Thank you, Bia. So what I found out over all the years that I've been in Toastmasters in Europe, then there's a lot of people don't understand all the forms that have to be filled out and it is a whole list of forms. So I think I have it on the next page, Bia. Um, okay, uh, so Henrik's asking the question, if we don't have 20 members, do we send in all the forms? Well, you could send in the forms you have, but it's not a complete process. So I would say wait till you get the 20. Um, so here we have the board members, Bia mentioned that. Um, I'm going to skip that one for now and go the next slide where we talk about the forms. So here's the list of the forms. Form number one, and, and Toastmasters has them numbered. So, so you know you have to fill out six of them. Form number one is the thing called application to organize. As well, it's in the manual about starting a Toastmaster Club. The application to organize is what you can um, put together when you have about 20, about 10 members only, but they're really keen and they want to start the club. That's, you fill in that form. You say, that form says, I'm interested to start a club in this city and they, this is the person who's going to organize it. As well, you can start to gather in the money because you have to send in $125 when you send in that form. Second form is charter payments and I have a picture of that coming up. That is where you say how many people you are going to pay for. If you have 20 completely new members 
then you will say 20 members. If you have three members who are moving over from another club, either transferring or being reinstated from another club, then you will pay for 70 new members and three, um, let's say three transferring members. Form number three is the Toastmaster Charter Membership Application. The Charter Membership Application is different than a regular membership application. It is a different form. It is simplified and you need to have that one. You need to send it in for all the people who are charter members. That has to be when you're going to send it into Toastmasters International, you have to scan in or mail in all 20 forms or there can be more than 20 as well. Form number four is the Charter Club Officer Information. You have to identify at least three officers, a president, a secretary, and a treasurer are minimum. I believe it's those three. And then you hope to have many more officers and be able to fill in all seven of them. Form number five is club information. This is the thing that says we are meeting in the city. Can I have one question about the form number three? All right. Uh, because you said that you have to identify uh, at least three members. What about the situation when you have, for example, seven or eight engaged people? Because that's the situation I'm facing right now. We are about to charter a new club and we have a lot of leaders that want to be part of the club officers, uh, to serve as officers. And should we elect them or should we nominate them? Because I couldn't find the information in the manuals and in the how to create the club information, how to find and nominate the first board. Should it be elected or can it be nominated? And uh, if nominated, okay. who actually yeah. nominate them? So, so usually in my experience, there's not enough knowledge about how a Toastmaster club goes. So I would say they are not nominated, they are appointed uh, because for the very first board to get this off the ground. Then within six months, you probably want to have an election. That's okay. my experience. And that's not for form number three, that would be form number four where you fill in the club officers. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me share our experience. Generally, we have difficulty filling the roles, but what I find that if there are people who, multiple people who want to go to the same role, then we do make an election to make sure that uh, there are legitimate and that it's not going to create this uh, problem. But in this case, we always bring in people from, experienced people from other uh, clubs who can lead the election to make sure that this is compliant. If you feel that it's not going to cause a problem and people can manage on who does what, it, it is good to nominate, but if you think that it can create later problems, it's not a big difference. So I, you might consider doing an election. Okay, thank you very much. So form number five was the club information about where you're meeting, um, uh, the city you're in, who... Um, Oh, I forget all the details on that one, but that's basic information about the club. Actually, that's the information that will eventually be on the Toastmasters webpage about where you're meeting, which day of the week you're meeting, that sort of thing. Form number six is your club constitution and bylaws with a certificate of club adoption and the certificate of the secretary. The club constitution is the standard constitution from Toastmasters International. And it's really good if you read that through. The bylaws are the individual things that you can change slightly because they say you're going to meet on Tuesdays at 1830 at a specific place. That's what it says in the bylaws. The bylaws say what fee you're going to charge because on top of the Toastmaster fee, you might also take another additional fee to cover room rental or coffee or something like that. Those are all indicated in bylaws. The certificate of club adoption is the form saying that a number of people have agreed that they're going to start a club. And the secretary 
has to um, sign that certificate there. Okay, um, could I go to the next slide before we take a bunch of the questions that are coming up in the chat? Okay, this was an, uh, all right, I'll take this one, or was there one in between? Can you go back one? Okay, so here's some specific things on the application to organize. This is the one you send in when you have approximately 10 people who have paid in some money and you want to start to get your charter kits. On the application to organize form, you have the people who are sponsors and the people who are mentors. The sponsor is helping to get the club chartered. They're helping to do market, that sort of thing. And the mentor is a person who's willing to help for six to 12 months after the club is chartered and then they may become a member of the club. The sponsor does not have to become a member of the club. Those two roles are usually the people who you, the area governor or has talked to that they're willing to help out the club. Then there can also be something called the sponsoring clubs, and that is clubs nearby, maybe the club of the sponsor or the mentor who are also helping to get the club going. Um, the only thing for the sponsoring club is they can get a ribbon for their banner because they help start a new club. And the next slide is the form of actually all the application, all the forms you have to send in and who actually has to sign it. Because I've seen ever so many forms where the right person does not sign the form. So please remember um, they have to sign it. The application to organize has to be signed by either what's called the contact person, maybe the person who initially expressed the interest in it, and he, he or she maybe becomes the president. The charter payment form, where you say how much money you're going to pay in, has to be done by the president and the secretary. The charter membership form has to be son, signed by each individual and an officer. Officer information number four doesn't requ require a signature. The club information doesn't require a signature, but the club constitution and bylaws requires the president and the secretary. Okay, so that's a whole bunch about forms. And now we could maybe look at a few of the questions that came up. Can I just add a quick comment on the uh, member application form? Yes. What we did in Hungary, in Hungary we have some special characters, so it's not very easy always to manage. And, and what we were asked to do actually is to prepare an Excel template, uh, listing the names and the information and sending the Excel instead of just sending in the scan document where they might have difficulty to read in TMI. Absolutely agree. I know I've seen some weird spellings come out when individuals fill in the form themselves, but Toastmaster does require that form. Yeah, uh, the rule, rule is that we got that uh, we have to keep them and this is mandatory to have them, but uh, what we generally send out is, is the Excel spreadsheet and this is accepted. Yeah. And Sari mentioned here that uh, market the roles well. I think people see the connection to their working life and they're more likely to be leaders. Um, issue related, I guess time issue related there. And what did Henrik say? Um, if you have a lot of member but no one wants to be on the board and help organize it. Um, then you're, Henrik, for your question, then I think you're not selling the benefit of leadership. Um, okay, then, then Easy Speak came in as sort of the questions. Um, you cannot get Easy Speak started until you have sent in the application to organize and got your prospective club number. Then you have enough information where you can start to get Easy Speak on board. Then you can start to keep track of people who come as guests, people who've paid in their membership forms and so on. But well, have I have another question. Uh, yeah. when, we, uh, when we do the prospective club, we pay $125 and with the starter pack, we, we get 20, uh, 20 competitor communicator and competent leader books, right? That's right. 
Okay, so then we, for example, for three months or for four months, we still uh, trying to find new people because, for example, we have only 10 or 15 uh, that are members of our club. And uh, right now, what about this, uh, what about the payment for those 20 books? Are they for free? No. Or uh, because when are we going to send this uh, uh, second uh, form of okay. the money, then, uh, then new people have to pay additional $20 for the books, right? Okay, so, so maybe what wasn't clear and what I said is um, because at some point in this organization process, you're also figuring out what amount of money um, you need to gather in for a membership fee to cover the $20 new member fee and the $72, 36 plus 36 that that a year's membership fee. Now I say a year because at least in Sweden we collect the Toastmaster fees for a year. In some other parts of Europe I recognize that they're only collecting it for six months. But in your in the fee that you're telling people that the membership fee is, it needs to be figured out the twenty dollars plus the thirty click. Yeah. And then when you're when you have the 20 people, that's when you have to send in that amount of money and forms two to six. Did okay, that answer? but not, not really, because uh, you see when we pay 125 and let's say that uh, the sponsor club pays the money, so we doesn't have to raise, raise it, right? So uh, we have 10 new people who comes to the meeting and they get this 10 those books from those 20 and then then have to pay for them again right no no so i i do not i personally do not give out any manuals until the person has paid in a membership fee whatever your club has determined the membership fee should be Okay, but those money uh, are not sent to the Toastmasters International. Not right away. Unless not it's right away, people. it's not. The $125 is just a basic fee that it, it's yeah. like a startup. Let's, let's, it's like a startup let's, fee. Well, uh, let's keep this, that $125 because let's uh, assume that uh, the sponsoring club will pay this amount, so we don't need to worry about this. But I can see the situation when people are the member of the prospective club for six or eight months, uh, because the club is so for that long prospective. They pay the dues, and those dues are not sent to the Toastmasters International. No, they're just sitting in your bank account. And then... Okay, and then... Mm -hmm. Then when you're finished, then when you have 20 people, then you send in that money. But actually the person who's in for those six to eight months gets double the amount of benefit because they've already been in the club and realized how it is to work. Yeah, but should they pay, uh, for example, let's, okay, let's say they are for 12 months because it took 12 months to charter the club. So they paid two terms. And then we charter after one year. No, so okay, when but, we but you haven't paid in any money to Toastmasters, so that money is still sitting in your account. Yes, I know. But uh, let's assume that after one year we charter the club. Should we ask those people who were in for this one year with us to pay another uh, six, thirty-six uh, dollars oh. for six months? No. If you've collected in the fees for a year, the seventy-two dollars plus twenty dollars. You do not, you do not take in any more money until you have to pay in more money to Toastmasters, which would be after a year. Uh, I'm not. Okay. I guess I'm not catching that with you. Um, not really sure. Elizabeth, this, this is Carla here. Perhaps I can help. The question is, at the time of charter, does the club, with the money sitting in the bank account, does the club pay retrospectively then for six months, or do they pay for the six months ahead, like charter going ahead for six months? Uh, six months in advance. So if, if my club got going, if I got my 20 members today, I would be paying in for the next six months, January, February, March, April, May, June. 
to TMI. Okay, so, okay. so that, is what, that is what you describe as the benefit because they are having, they basically they, they paid the club, but the club does not, for the 12 months during the prospective, the club does not need to um, forward any money to Toastmasters. That's right. They have the use of the manuals, which came when they paid the $125 application to organize, but they haven't had to pay any fees to TMI. So really, they're not a member yet, but they've got to use the materials. Okay. And what about the situation if, for example, at the very start, we have uh, 25 people and Fantastic. we already... Uh, yes, at the, at the demo meeting, and we have 25 people that are interested into the Toastmasters, and uh, we get from the pros from this prospective pack 20 manuals, and we have to give it to those 20 ah, people. So wait a wait a minute here. Five people. Wait a minute. I, I can stop you right yeah. there. So with okay. you get if you're at the demo meeting, you still haven't sent the application to organize. But at the, yes. on the application to organize forum, you say we have 25 people who are interested to form, then Toastmasters will send you 25 kits. Okay. But you also and have to pay, like a, you also have to pay and then 25. We have a delayed payment for them, right? You have, you receive them in advance on a loan and then you pay it when you fill in all the rest of the forms. Okay, that's clear, thank you. Yeah. Okay, then Thomas asks here, in case of a corporate club entry fee, one time for a club, a new member fee for each member paid by the company from the company account and six months membership dues are paid from the members from different accounts. Uh, send two payment forms. What do you mean by payment forms? Um, it's membership application and you send only one by person, Thomas. It's not a payment form, it's a membership application. Uh, is no, this form working? number two is the yeah. payment form. You, yeah. need to, uh, you need to send six forms to organize the club. Yeah. In case okay. of prospective, you also need, there is, I think this form number two, you need to uh, fulfill the payment for, for the charter fee and for the initial fee, for example, for 10 members, uh, if you start the prospective club. But what if you uh, want to have invoice for this uh, initial fee, uh, charter fee and uh, entry fee for members and uh, and those is paid, covered by the company. The rest, membership dues are paid for from the, for the each member. Okay, so, so you in, in your bank account you have collected the money that the members have to pay in. So that's sitting in your club bank account somewhere. And the yes. Toastmasters will invoice as long as you give them a clear indication of what you want on the invoice and the company information, Toastmasters will send out an invoice to a company. So you just have to indicate on that payment form that let's say $125 will come from a company invoice and payment and the other money, $20 per member and 36 will come by the other way that your members have decided to pay, whether it is a credit card, a bank transfer, or whatever. And so you you should specify this in the email, not in the form. But because it can because be both in the ways. form you it can be both ways. ways. Yeah. No, in, in the form you can only uh, put uh, payment information only for the one account, basically for one credit card. Uh, then it can be in an email and I've often added on an extra page to that form anyway. Okay, so then right. you said after a year and they do not pay again. No account information from second account is in the email. Sure. Uh, also, one thing that if it's a credit card payment, it's pretty straightforward, but generally if it's a credit card payment, then you will have to ask separately in an email the proper invoice indicating the information that should be on the invoice but if it's a transfer not a card credit card information then what I do recommend that once you have made the payment make sure that you send the proof of payment so the confirmation of the payment to Toastmaster International to the new club uh, at toastmaster.org 
because very often banks do not transfer all the information and TMI has difficulty allocating the money and until the money is not allocated to to this uh, form, the form one, they will not be, uh, send out the material. Yeah. So yeah. instead of waiting for them and then complaining, it is always the safest for bank transfers to send out an email right away the confirmation as well and with this uh, the allocation of the payment will be much faster. Yeah, and, oh, and related, so. related to bank transfers, um, the banks always take a fee for transferring money, so you as the club have to send along whatever fee, so you have to ask the bank what is the fee that the bank where you have your money will take and what is the fee that the receiving bank will take. And Toastmasters can usually tell you the receiving bank fee. You have to add in that extra amount of money for the bank transfer. So I really yeah. suggest totally that if somebody can pay by a credit card and get reimbursed from their company if that's the way or from the bank account where your club has it, that is the quickest way to do it. Okay, thank you. I think I understand. Okay, and somebody asked, after paying the 125, how much time can the prospective club use and organize meetings? Um, yeah, it's often been for a year, but Toastmasters is starting to get a lot tighter. If you read the forms, it is often for, it, it actually says six months, but Toastmasters has been a bit lenient and taken it for about a year. But that's a really good argument to use for people, you know, getting going. Um, hey, our time is running out. We're going to have to pay another fee again. Let's get 20 members. As well, the district officers like Bia as club growth director, she indicates to TMI every year whether um, a club is still viable and whether it can hold on to its prospective club number for a bit longer. Actually, when a prospective club reaches the one year limit, then the contacts and also us, we do receive a message indicating that uh, um, checking on whether this is really still in the process and if we are going to charter the club. Yeah. And if and if it's dragging on for a year, then somebody isn't doing enough marketing. Okay. Uh, there was an earlier question is, uh, Linda, I think, asked, how big a city is it needed to start a club? Um, some answers came from from the U.S. that said, if a city or town has a McDonald's or has a Burger King or has um, some other fast food restaurants like that, then it's definitely big enough to hold host a Toastmaster club. My, my personal thoughts from Europe are if a city has 30,000 people, there's definitely enough people to host a Toastmaster club. Um, okay, Bia, sorry, did we have more things that we were supposed to cover here? Because I see we have about 10 minutes left. I think these were the main topics. Is there any qu other question out? If not, I would just add a few points that came to my mind during the discussion. I liked very much, or I mean, and then I would just do a wrap up. I don't know if there's anything else that came to your mind uh, or any of you who wants that would be worth sharing. Or should I just go ahead? Go ahead for now and then we'll see if anything else comes up. Okay. So I liked very much the idea when people say that the day is not good and it could be a good idea to start the other club. We also see sometimes that clubs have difficulty, they like each other and they have difficulty splitting up even if they are, there are 40, 50 people or even more. And we know that we lose many people because with 40, 50 people, most of the people don't have an opportunity to speak, they cannot develop and they lose motivation. The pr uh, practice that worked best for us, where people did not like to split the club and they feel it might ruin it, to start a second day. So instead of having just one meeting on a week, 
have a second day and generally there is a, a split between the two days because most people are not committed to come to both days or they cannot make it both and within a few months max half a year it turns out who comes to let's say the Tuesday meeting or the Thursday meeting and it's quite obvious that who would be the members of one club and the other and splitting can become much easier and less pain uh, painful so I think that's a trick that uh, that's a process that you can do if you see that the club is too big and it should be splitted but uh, people don't feel comfortable yet and they don't know how to do that altogether is there any motivation for the club board to split yeah that's a good question Pedra and I think that we keep saying in the Toastmasters that Toastmaster is about the members and the leaders are serving the members and as I mentioned what we see that people come into the club and they just go after the first meeting and don't come back and people who are members of the club are complaining that they have a two three months waiting list to make one speech so even if you organize some speech marathon this is not a very good situation for the members so I think the key motivation from my point of view and Elizabeth might have some extra is really that if you want to serve better the people and give them opportunity to grow then splitting the club after a while is very important in Hungary we make sure that we do have cross club events like uh, Christmas parties Halloween or the conferences where people from the different clubs can still meet so it's not that and they cannot can visit other clubs from time to time of course but uh, I think that we had success stories so far with uh, splitting clubs and improved quality okay. is this answering your question I see I see some other question came in so after the year uh, Thomas wrote something else here um, after year but I'll go back to Pedram's comment there is there any benefit or motivation to split the club yes so that more people get speaking opportunities and so more people get leadership opportunities I would say that as soon as it's 40 50 people anything over 40 then it is time to to move on and get a new club but I, pr I prefer not to say split the club I prefer to say something which I think is fairly positive anyway and that is birth a new club okay and Thomas wrote something I'm not quite sure I understood so after a year did they do not pay six months membership dues so Thomas it depends when you mean paying six month dues if the club is still in prospective status then they haven't paid any dues to Toastmasters um, it is only when they start to send in the forms that they become a real club and then and as they become the real club and send in all the forms they pay six months dues in advance if Thomas was still on the call but we're starting to lose a lot of people any other questions come up let me answer Carla's question Carla you were asking if you need a six month payment you always have to pay at least six months but I do recommend if you charter a club let's say from March 1st that means that from April 1st the next six months period would start so instead of paying six months it might make sense to pay seven months because you will miss the deadline and uh, the payment for the next term will have to last till the end of the six months period yeah. so but and, and actually but paying, paying six months, months in advance sorry I interrupted you Bia paying the six months in advance actually Toastmasters at the next payment time you know the March and, and October payment time Toastmasters does actually send out an email invoice shall we say to say what is the remaining time they need to pay for until the next payment period if that made sense so yeah absolutely this is correct but I, I did find that multiple people were complaining that we just paid in six months two months ago and we have difficulty collecting another two months again so that's why it is easier to be proactive and collect in advance 
because they will have to pay anyway. I uh, my suggestion is still the, to collect in a whole year's membership due right at the start. Yeah, in this case, you will not have that kind of problem for sure. Um, so if the club is paying once a year, that's good. And also if it's paying six months, then it is uh, good to think about the timing to make sure that the full, full, full period would cover. Wow. I'm reading Pedram's comment here that Hansa Reidner has about 100 members. Oh my God, Hansa. You've got at least three clubs. Please, let's get three clubs going out of there. The new club builder for, for Finland is Anna Reynolds for um, that division. Anna Reynolds, I don't think, is on this call tonight, but um, no, she's sick. Oh, then we can put you in touch with her. If you'll put your email address, then we'll send along Anna's email address and information to you. Uh, Pedram writes, uh, the biggest part of the members will be already members of the old club. Yes, and so that's a unique situation if you're birthing a new club because the club has got too big. Then uh, then the members don't have to pay the new membership fee, They simp and they transfer to the completely new club. So uh, if they've already paid in their membership dues in the existing club and they are birthing in the middle of the six month dues, they do not have to pay, oh, they do have to pay for six months in advance anyway. And then, then mm -hmm. the fee is adjusted. Yeah, I've seen a comment that the payment is not clear yet. So if you look at the page that is up, it's the payment details. I but I do recommend to look at it like the way I used to interpret. Like the 125 is a registration fee to register the club as Toastmaster International, and the 20 is register a new member, and the regular recurring membership fee is the 36. Um, okay, so I'm reading, uh, that was Yuka, who's the HTML viewer. He's saying on, on the demo day, they get exactly 20 people. So yes, first they would have to pay the $125, the application to organize. Then they have to pay in $20 for each new member of the 20 members and $36 for each of the member. And they send in all the forms at one time. Yep. You've got the amount, yes. you said it right, yeah. You'll so basically it. the balance sheet from uh, the club's point of view would uh, show minus uh, 125, right? Uh, it would show 125, but it would also show that they've paid $56 to TMI as well. No, 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 and so since the club receives uh, 20 times 56, so new member and six months, and then uh, it pays out those uh, 20 times 56 plus the chartering fee, 125. You should, uh, on the collection, I think uh, that's a good point because generally what the clubs collect is not the 100, uh, I mean, it's not the $36 because if you have extra fees like any rental or if you have to cover the uh, registration for the club, then you need to make sure that you collect a bit more to cover those expenses. You, so you should not start with the minus. Yeah, so you actually you actually need to put you actually need to put together a budget for the club. And I have some examples of that that I could include or or I have included in this presentation because I always uh, allocate out the $125 by 20 members. So that I know. Look at this page that I'm showing on the budget. It is included. Yeah. So, um, but I so I take 125 dollars and I allocate that over the 20 people. If I get approximately 20 people, so whatever that is, I don't know. Let's say it's eight dollars a person. So I put eight dollars plus 20 plus 36. Or if I'm collecting for a whole year, then it's 72. And then I figure out if there's meeting room rental, if there's bank account charges, and whether I'm whether my club might be putting together pins or a banner or something like that. And I put in all yeah, those together other, and figure out the rate. This, okay. 
I got the idea. It's just a X front of everything else. Yes, that's basically it. Yeah. So you pay this 125 plus 25 plus 36 to the TMI, but the amount that you collect don't have to be exactly the same. Yeah. I can give you an example of the budget sheet. You can, if you want to see that, you can send me a, a, a buzz and I'll send something along to you. Actually, Elizabeth, I promised people that we are going to share these files yes. in PDF form. Absolutely. And maybe we can also share this document and uh, we, we'll make it available for you guys so that you can uh, check it out. Yeah, yeah. I think, okay. I think uh, a lot of people miss out on this this budget thing, so I think it's a really good point to add, that maybe we need to add it in. Okay, so I think these were the key points that we discussed. Let me see if there was any question. Okay, the last comment is got it. And we are 9.33, so if there is no further question, then I recommend to end this session. Great. And we will share the link with everyone. Let me thank everyone for the input, for the co participation, especially Elizabeth and Kirsten for their presentations and all the inputs that, that you shared with us. So thank you very much. And we will plan other sessions where we can go in more details on how to build a successful club and how to keep growing. Thank you very much and have a great evening and happy new year to all of you. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.